yesterday was a big one. Oh, my, this week was nothing but fireworks. And we're going to highlight some things. So mm. stand by. Here we go. Tommy, 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 what better place to start than Jennifer McCabe? Yeah, in the military, I would definitely say take a knee, smoke them if you got them, because <laughs> this is a good one. <laughs> Jennifer, Jennifer, Jennifer. First off, much like her husband, she is not coming across very well. She's not coming across likable. She's trying to portray herself as this like um this is i am the end all be all this is fact but her story's not standing up and she's being very obtuse and for no reason well, her, it's not just her story her husband's story just fell apart because of this officer that spoke yesterday like like well, <laughs> everybody's stories are starting to come apart and we're going to speak on that yeah, but what I want us to do is, because see, here's my issue, Tommy. I don't know if you're in the same position, but I'm when I'm listening to the prosecution, like on direct, these witnesses sound way too rehearsed, yes. and it's not coming off sincere, so I'm not necessarily believing them. I, I'm taking what they're saying with a grain of salt. Normally on direct is where you get a lot of really good information. Um, but in this case, it seems like the only time we're really getting into information is on cross. I, I think you're absolutely right on this one. Like this is, or, and I'm yeah. going to be serious about this or if the, it's so well rehearsed, and then all of a sudden the defense will do their cross and get cut off by the knees. I'm seeing that, too, with the judge. It's like, really? Uh, so that's why I'm like, I, I'm i actually paying more attention on cross because I feel like prosecution is avoiding. Obviously, you know, they don't want certain things to come out, but I would think they would get ahead of things. But lolly, yeah, lolly, kind of just, lolly. Kind of just like, hey, this was found. You get what I'm saying? Get in front of the questionnaires before, before the defense starts asking them yeah. basic questions. And then they start fumbling it all over themselves. Well, that's what happened with Jennifer McCabe. It is. It is. So we're going to watch some of the cross on Jennifer McCabe. Primarily with the phone records. There was a bombshell moment. This week. And so what I want to do, if you don't mind, I am going to share her testimony. How about that? Yeah. That's awesome. All right. So we're going to do it this way because I don't want anything taken away from her. First off, mm, yeah, that is the feeling. Her look right there is my feeling when I listened to her. So here we go. Here's my Pac-Man. If you wanted to know, in general, Let me turn this how up. long it takes for a human being to pass away because of exposure to extreme temperatures, right? If you wanted to know the answer to that, what would you Google search? What phrase would you use? I'm not sure. All I recall is what the defendant asked me to Google in the morning. If oh. you wanted to know, I'm asking a different question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you personally wanted to know, how long does it take for a person to die of exposure due to extreme temperatures, what would you put in? What phrase would you use? Objection. Sustained. Why? Well, we don't have to guess at the phrase that you would use. If you wanted to know something about dying of hypothermia, do we? Did you actually Google search it? Objection. Sustained. Ask that differently, please. Did you, in fact, form, use a phrase to Google search how long it takes for someone to die of extreme temperatures. I did in the morning at the request of your client. Okay. And what not what he asked. Did you use? I'm not sure. Really? 
<laughs> Correct, Diane. Was- Hold on. <laughs> because that's what was going through my head. Did you hear him say that? Really? Yeah. Because, really? come on, you know exactly which phrase he's yeah. talking about. Years of this, you don't know the phrase that you used? Objection, Your Honor. There's so many lies okay. and misconceptions no on no, social no, no media. Question. Question. Oh, I apologize. Okay. Are you telling me you don't remember what Google search you put in? Karen was screaming. My hands were shaking. And she was saying, Google hypothermia, how long does it take to die in the cold? And what did you, what exactly. phrase did you put in your phone? I'm just asking you to say it. Just say Why it. don't you show me it? Why don't you, you answer the question? You don't remember? Again, she was screaming, Google hypothermia, how long does it take to die in the cold? How about... And I picked up my phone and I started Googling. And you literally, Added. to this day, right now, under oath, you're saying you don't remember that phrase that you used. Objection. Asked and answered. I'll allow it. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying that at her... Do you remember it or do you not, Miss McCabe? That's a simple question. That morning, I don't remember specifically what I Googled, but I do know what you've put out to the social media. How about this? Hoss long to die in cold. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, it's been everywhere. Why does that sound so familiar? Because you've put it out in social media. Hold on. Did you see what she said? Yeah, it's been everywhere. So you did know the phrase. You're just purposely being confrontational. And that's not a good look to a juror. It's just not. Asking you to say it. Why yeah, no, I totally agree with you on this. You literally don't remember? Mm-hmm. Again, she was screaming, Google hypothermia, how long does it take Her nose to die is flaring. in the cold? How about- and I picked up my phone and I started Googling. And you literally, mm-hmm. to this day, right I love the accent. Throat, you're saying you don't remember that phrase that you used. Objection. I'll allow it. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying that at her... Do you remember it or do you not, Miss McCabe? That's a simple question. That morning, I don't remember specifically what I Googled, but I do know what you've put out to the social media. How about this? Hoss long to die There she goes, cold. lie number one. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, it's been everywhere. Why does that See? sound so familiar? Because you've put it out in social media. Well, I haven't put anything out in social media because I don't personally have social media. I'm sorry, Turtle Boy did. So if the world happens to know it, mm-hmm. that's not on me, is it? I guess not. I guess yeah. not. I guess not. Hoss long to die in cold is what I'm gonna, you put in to the Google search, right? Here we go. If you say so. Is there a reason that you don't want to admit to that? Hey, pause it real quick. <laughs> I, a simple question, right? No reason. And I apologize, everybody, about my camera being delayed, but uh, you can still hear me pretty good, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I feel like, and we mentioned this offline about the whole uh, Amber Heard case about, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Well, if cross examination, then then that's what it is. Like, but here's the thing: if you ask me, hey, how do you Google this? I will tell you, hey, these are the key phrases that you were. This is the key search. Okay. The prosecution could easily came back during the cross. You know, when they get the the redirect. chance to come back up, and it's like, yeah, the redirect. redirect. Sorry. Mm-hmm. And um, and could it easily have been like, hey, why did you search this? phrase up Mm -hmm. because she told me to Mm -hmm. cut and dry but saying it's whatever your client says it's just a bad excuse well he's just asking her what phrase did you use and she knew it but she got caught in a lie right there right when she said yeah it's everywhere yeah i knew it was everywhere so yeah come on karen Oh, man, I can't even use that because Karen's the defendant. So we're going to have to now everybody's come on, Jen. Oh, I'm sorry for all you, Jennifer. Come on, Libby. (laughs) Screaming at you and yelling at you. How long did you die? How long does it take for a person to die? I'm sorry. She said something like, how long does it take for a person to die of hypothermia? And you Google searched it at 623 and 624. Is that right? Again, I'm not sure about the exact times. I yeah. just did it after Karen asked me right to do here. it. Do you quarrel with the idea They're that those right were about here. 30 seconds apart? Okay. Um, Look at the misspellings. Ms. McCabe, that's what he's getting her on. That both spellings, both miss. So that's what the big deal is, is it's hard for her not to forget this. 
Um, she's saying, yeah, she misspelled it because she was outside and Karen's yanking on her arm and screaming and everything. It's not necessarily, I mean, the misspelling though does come in because it proves something. So to me, that's, what it, I said. that's why I mentioned mm -hmm. about look at those misspellings, because for a person like me, mm -hmm. I would go back and try to correct it, go back and correct it until it says it right. And normally like Google and well, I got it. They're using did a Google, Safari. Google. No, she said she did a Google search through Safari. But Google, everybody knows Google yes. will Correct write it out correctly mean? on top, and you just click that. Do you get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it. They say, "Do you mean it'll it'll?" It, yes, it's yes, the yes, dumb yes. Mm -hmm. spellings of that phrase result in the exact same search results, don't they? I'm not aware of that. No. You Google them, and you're looking on your phone, you Google it. How long to die in cold, and how long to die in CIKD. Just admit the obvious, Google, lady. Right? I did, yes. And they result in the exact same search results, don't they? I have no idea. So my question to you is, why the two searches? She was standing next to me, screaming, shaking my hand. My hand was cold. I was trying to Google it. Obviously, maybe whatever came up first didn't make sense because I had some misspellings. So I did it again. But it so would bring you to the same thing. Results in articles concerning dying of exposure. We never got the chance to read it. Well, you're the one, you then why would you do it again? Karen and myself. Well, you're the one holding the phone, Ms. McCabe. Correct. So you're looking down at your phone and you see exactly what comes up, right? I don't remember exactly what came up. Well, what came up was something about dying of hypothermia, didn't it? That's what she asked. So why do it again? Why do it again, Ms. McCabe? You have the result. Why the second search? I cannot answer that beyond telling you that my hands were frozen. She was shaking me and screaming at me. See how she's trying to play her hey, screen. Pause it real quick. Okay. Now, See sometimes with a cell phone, when we've all done it before, we've tried to search something and it didn't fully load. So what do you do? You. But that's not what she's saying. I know, I know, but oh, I'm just okay. saying. Mm hmm that could explain that's the excuse that she could have used it, which could have explained why there was a double. But she didn't. I'm I know. Going by what I know. She said, so that's on her. I, 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 totally I don't want to give anybody it. lies or excuses. We know this. She knows this. But let's just look at her, what she did do. And she searched it multiple times. And notice what she's doing is she is gaslighting in her answers, portraying Karen Reed. Yeah, she was screaming. Bro, she just found her boyfriend dead and looks like he got the shit kicked out of him lying in the snow. I'd be screaming. Yeah. But she's totally trying to play it up. She was screaming at me. Well, if you were so close to John O'Keefe, why weren't you screaming? Yeah, so the excuse that I was giving was if that would have happened, like mm -hmm. say you search something and it didn't come up the first time with your phone, you might have hit it again. But no, it looks like there's like four times that yeah. she tried to do this, and you could see where it says default we're connected mm -hmm. to each one of those. So yeah, it went all the way through. Yeah. So trying to lie, be, saying la la la, you get what I'm Here saying? Here we go it's to just, a key part. Bad. So watch so this. this first search that says dying cold. I do. What's that time? Holy shnikes. You've got the, um, it's right over at 2.27. A.M. or P.M.? A.M. A.M. <laughs> Bam. Ms. McCabe. Deleted. Wait. <laughs> you Here made that search at 2.27 a.m. because you knew that John O'Keefe was outside and your sister's lawn dying in the cold, didn't you? Absolutely not. I did not make that search at that time. No. Realized the next morning after John was discovered after 6 a.m. that you had an incriminating search on your phone, didn't you? Absolutely not. Oh, so sell bright lies. You searched it again in order to overwrite <clears throat> the original mm -hmm. search at 227. 
correct? Again, absolutely not. But you were nervous and you screwed it up. So the first search you made at 623 was Hoss Long to die in CIKD, wasn't it? No. Well, you see the search right there, correct? I see the search, but I disagree with your narrative. It's not his narrative. That search? See okay, first of all, she took that line directly from Amber Heard. I disagree with your representation. I disagree with your narrative. It's not his narrative. This is the cell bite re That's, report. And that right there is the reason why I say I see a lot of similarities to the Amber Heard case to come right to this. And it's just... You know, if it walks like a duck, talks like a duck, it's a dog. It's right. kind of ordeal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pretty much, right? They're trying to say, listen, this cell right extraction, they took it directly from your phone. So she's saying it's right everywhere else. Oh, wait, no, I didn't do that. So I disagree with your narrative. It's not his narrative. That's the report, dick bag. I just can't. I want to punch her in the face. I want to go to the bar and kick the shit out of her. And then I can lie about it and pretend like I don't remember. Okay? I just can't. 623. And you agree that time frame is accurate, right? Again, it's what the report says. And that's a, that comports. Not his narrative now. <laughs> in the morning in 51 seconds. Correct. There's a second search. Correct? Correct. And this one, damn cameraman! I know. Come on, focus. Six twenty-four, sixteen. Correct. Correct. I'm sorry, eighteen. And that comports with your memory as well. I remember googling it at the request of the defendant. Yes. About twenty-seven seconds apart. Correct. Yes. But the reality is your first search didn't comport with the 2.27 a.m. search, did it? It was a different spell, wasn't it? I never searched a 2.27. That is not reality. But the 6.24 <laughs> search... It's the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> what what freaking reality is she living in? <laughs> What reality is she living in? That's not reality. Yeah, brah. It is. It is. That's the Cellbrite report from the phone extraction from your phone. How can she sit there and say that is not reality? It did exactly mirror the search that, according to this report, took place at 227, correct? I'm sure Cellbrite will be able to explain it to you. I can't. And then of those three searches, one of them, Ended up deleting. Isn't that right? I never deleted any search. Yeah, I did. No, she might have not. Take a look. Maybe her husband or right report. Top search. And the column marks deleted. Bow. Right see? there. I see, I a, see a yes. In red. <laughs> he circled it. <laughs> <laughs> perfect, too. It was like a perfect circle. Ms. McCabe, the reason you deleted that 2.27 a.m. call... Here we go. ...because you realized that if you were caught Googling how long it takes for a person to die in the cold three and a half hours before John's body was found, that would incriminate you. Would yes. It? Objection. Yes. The objection sustained. Yes, Did it you would. you delete that search because you knew that you would be implicated in John O'Keefe's death, if that search was found on your phone. Objection. Well, uh, could you answer that, please? I did not delete that search. Right. I never made that search at 223. I never would have left John O'Keefe out in the cold Get to die because he was my friend that I loved. But he's not your family, is he? Oh! Family and friends. Is Objection. Your... Sustained. What are you objecting? You acknowledge that you made the search at 623, don't you? In the morning, I did, yes. You acknowledge that you made the, the search at 624. Multiple times in the Watch morning, look yes. Look at the jury like Amber Heard. ...that show up that were all found on your phone 
the one that you disavow is the one that took place at 2.27 a.m., which would implicate you and exonerate my client, correct? Jackson. You can't say things like exonerate my client. Ask it differently, like Mr. Jackson. Of those three searches, it was only one marked deleted. Isn't that right? Correct. That was the one at 2.27 a.m., correct? I wouldn't even know how to go in and delete you know who would? You already brought it up, Tommy, with someone else. And her husband, Matt, is an IT specialist. Yes. And that's, and remember, at the party. Yep. So, Jennifer, 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 that did not go well for you. But it wasn't quite as bad as the cross-examination of your husband's buddy, the ATF agent, Brian Higgins. <laughs> Can we have a moment of silence for what happened to that man on Friday? Hey, look, I waited. We hours need a moment of silence. To... We need a moment of silence. And go. <laughs> All right. So I waited. <laughs> I'm so excited about this one. Oh. I waited hours. And then this morning I text Mel and I'm like, Mel, we need to talk about this. Are you awake? And if not, just call me when you are. <laughs> I should just let you people know, I have watched this cross, this masterful cross. Alan Jackson is an amazing attorney. And watching this cross, I got secondhand embarrassment because Brian Higgins clearly has no gain. Now, on direct, we have to be upfront. We have to be honest. Karen mm -hmm. Reed is no angel. By any means, is she a murderer is a different question. Apparently, it came out on direct. She kissed Brian Higgins, the ATF agent. Now, Brian Higgins, he has an office in the Canton Police Department. He is also friends with uh, Brian Albert, Brian's brother, Chris Albert, who is a Canton selectman, meaning the executive board of government. He also knows the the um, district attorney, not Lolly, Lolly's boss. Um, he is extremely well connected. But uh, about a week before uh, the death of John O'Keefe, Karen and him were flirting via text. She said, "Oh, you're hot." He he's it. It was embarrassing because it's like these are like 40 something year olds, but they're trying to talk like they're in high school, but it came across more like junior high. Do you like me? Do you like me? Do you like me? I almost wanted to, you know, those weren't, weren't trying yeah, things. Little, <laughs> hey, pick a number, not pick yeah. a word. And yeah, you open just, it up or at some point, yes or no, yes. which one? <laughs> Do you like me circle? Yes. At some point I thought there was going to be a note passed or we were going to see one of those, but they were flirting back and forth, but she didn't take it any further. It came out also last week or over this past week. John kissed a woman in Aruba. Karen got very upset. They got in a huge fight in Aruba over it. So they come back and the week before she, I guess at some point she kissed Brian Higgins. Brian Higgins again gave the screenshots of the texting that occurred between him and Karen Reed for like a week's time. Did it go any further? No, no. I mean, no, nothing happened. And part of it is because this dude has no game, but you know, when I was listening to his testimony, I thought, well, he's actually providing motive two ways. One that he's trying to, and it does, it does paint Karen Reed as, listen, she, she is kind of coming across as, she's kind of a bitch. She said she, in the text messages and in their conversation, it came across that she did not want to get married. She did not want to have kids. She admitted um, in the text, she writes that things were far from perfect between her and and John, because she didn't want to have kids or be married. She, you know, and I can't fault her for that. Some people are like that. But John's raising his niece and nephew as his own. You know, he was a very yeah. 
family man. So she goes to Brian Higgins and they're talking back and forth. And then on the 23rd of January, she starts ghosting him. Like, and, and, oh my God, that even comes up on cross and it was hysterical. Um, it, it, like she won't respond to him or anything else. So when I'm saying like two motives, the on the one hand, he's saying she was already cheating on him. Uh, she was trying to get with me or I thought we had something. So that's motive that things weren't perfect. But it actually, for me, and I don't know about you, Tommy, it came across as he actually had motive to kill John O'Keefe because he was very interested in Karen. He was attracted to her. He wanted something to go on. And she ghosted him. And maybe his jealousy. You know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> absolutely. I didn't want to cut you off because you were on no, a roll go there. Ahead. But uh, with John kissing some girl in Aruba, mm -hmm. you know, nothing. What is it? Uh, nothing goes like a woman scorn or hell. Oh, hell hath water. no Hell hath yeah, no fury like a woman scorned. I don't know. She could have been flirting with him because he worked in the same office. You know what I'm saying? Or a yeah. little bit higher up. But mm -hmm. who was know. working in whose same office? No, no, no. You, still law enforcement. You oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to He's piss still... John off mm -hmm. and be like, well, I've been talking such and such. Uh huh. All right. But apparently, but John right found out. The whole... I'm pretty sure she told John. Yeah, yeah, I think she did. Because. And it, I think they probably worked through it because the CT, CCTV footage of them at the bar showed them very oh, loving and affectionate. You know, they, they looked great. Um, but let's go ahead and check out. And I don't say this often about witnesses, but I will about him. He comes across as a total douche canoe. I I'm love sorry. this camera, man. Let's take pictures of the fan. I know. <laughs> so annoying there's like you can focus uh, on anything but of all like why not focus on the great seal you know no let's just look at this fan all right so here we go that's easy to find it's literally the last page with the court's permission may i publish yes does that look like a fair representation of what you're looking at the last page of that series of texts yes at the very top could you read what you write in the blue bubbles starting at the top. Ha ha, stranger, stranger. And then what was the response from Miss Reed? Hey, I was at the Hilly all weekend. And what did you respond at that point? I have not heard from you. And <laughs> by the way, if you look at the next date down, what's the date underneath I have not heard from you? The 23rd. So this would have Isn't that interesting? Did you notice this? Look at the date on his iPhone. Doesn't say 2022 like the other ones. You know? Yeah, this is like body already and then, found, and then you're going to be texting like, hey, phone works? No, no, body wasn't found until the 30th, 29th, I mean. This is the week okay, before. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, but yeah, look yeah, at yeah. this. Sunday, comma, January 23, comma, 9.40 p.m. Down here, Friday. Well, no date. No date. And it's different than the other cell phones well, where they had 20, that Friday 22. was probably a week. Yeah, that's just weird. Yeah, because they didn't extract it from the phone. He gave them a uh, screenshot. Oh, that's right. That's right. I remember this. He took his own screenshots of his phone. Okay, so here we go. It preceded the 23rd, correct? Yes. Okay. Then on the 23rd, and by the way, after you texted, I have not heard from you, she did not respond, correct? She did not respond. Then on the 23rd, she did respond with phone works, correct? In the arrows, like both ways. Right. Yep. And then what did you text after that? I just said, thought you were all set. And how did she respond? She said, with talking? No. That's all I have for that. Okay. Um, bring the lights back up. So clearly with that last text, her response was in response to you saying, thought we were all set. She said, with talking, no. Correct? Yeah, yes. Did that indicate to you that with flirting, yes, we're all done? No, I didn't read anything into it. Okay. But you did read where she said, with talking, no. Correct? Yes. Uh, and then you responded,
I said, hmm, are you sure? <laughs> that sexy man hunk there. <laughs> I'm kidding. The next time you saw or communicated with her, she was walking into the waterfall bar on the 29th, early morning hours of the 20, late night hours of the 28th, going into the early morning of the 29th with her boyfriend, John O'Keefe, correct? Yes. Now you had discussed your flirtations, if I can use that word, that you had with Ms. Reed with your friends, at least some of them, correct? Um, I don't recall that, no. Do you recall that you like openly he's being shared honest the there. details of your interest in Ms. Reed uh, with your work supervisor at the uh, DOJ? Well, that was after I shared, I shared what happened that she kissed me. Yes, I did share that with her. And that was with... Uh, that was the was, first time. That was with the, a person by the name of Kate Dowd. Is that, that right? That's correct. And that was before January 29th? Yes. Um, and that's because your interest in Karen Reed, whether you call it romantic or sexual or whatever, your interest was something that was at least occupying your mind at that point, correct? No. It was occupying uh. your mind enough to share it with your boss. No, I sh what I shared with my boss was the fact that she kissed me. That was it. Did you discuss your flirtatious relationship with Karen Reed with Brian Albert at any point? No. Never? No. So you were on a four-hour drive in a snowstorm back from New York with Mr. Reed. I'm sorry, with Mr. Reed, with Mr. Albert. Um, and your interest in Karen Reed never came up. No. Even though he's a good friend. Yes, just something I wouldn't talk about. You'd been drinking since about what time? Uh, what, what time? That's a bad way to ask it. What time did you start drinking? When, when are we at, Mr. I'm sorry, on the 20, on the 20, uh, 28th, when you got back from New York, when did you start drinking? Well, it wasn't until I swapped out vehicles and I went up to the hillside. Okay. What time? Um, that would have been, give me a time frame. Nine-ish, eight-ish? It was dark. It was maybe in the area of eight o'clock. And what time do you think you got to Waterfall? I couldn't say. I don't. It was after the hillside. Did before Brian Albert left hillside, did he tell you that John O'Keefe had been invited over to meet them at the waterfall? No. Was there any particular reason why you changed your mind and left the hillside to go to the waterfall? Well, I, I think, as I previously testified, that it was because I didn't always take them up on their offer, and I usually did the Irish exit, and I decided because of the weather and everything else, and it had been a long day, that I would go down there and join them. didn't have anything to do with you knowing that Karen Reed might be at the waterfall. It couldn't have, because I didn't know she or John O'Keefe would even be there. I didn't know who was going to be there other than Brian's wife. Do you have any text messages? I feel like Brian? that's true. I feel like he's being honest. Live? I don't recall. Mm -hmm. I feel like he's being honest there. He, he told me about it at the hillside. And once he got to the waterfall, he got to the waterfall obviously before you did. He did, I think shortly before, yes. Any text communications between you and Brian Albert about who was at the waterfall or who was expected to come to the waterfall? No, not that I recall. Now, you've already indicated, and I don't think we need to go into a lot of detail about this, but I want to ask you just in general, uh, the mood at the waterfall was... Good spirits, correct? It was, it was great. Band yeah. was playing. You did not see any sort of tension between John and Karen? I did not. Um, nobody seemed overly intoxicated? No. I mean, you had had several drinks before you even got to the waterfall, right? I think it was three to four. Did you drink additionally at the waterfall? I did, yes. Did you drink whiskey or beer or what? Whiskey. Okay. Uh, how many did you, do you think you had? I couldn't put a number on it. At least a couple. And ultimately, you left from there in your personal vehicle and drove over to, that's the Jeep, drove the Jeep, over to yes. the waterfall, correct? I drove over to the waterfall? I'm I, sorry. I was at the waterfall. Left the waterfall, drove over to 34 Fairview. I did, yes. Um, when so John you drove drunk? To the waterfall, mm -hmm. uh, were you already there? Yes. He greeted you, you indicated, correct? Yes, I believe so. Karen walked in with him? Yes. But she did not greet you, did she? I think they kind of went like that in different directions. Right. 
Yes. Did she greet you? No. Right. So she walked over toward the corner <laughs> of the bar. And you didn't Sean exist. Came over and greeted you, and then walked over and joined her. Correct. Yes. Karen didn't stop what she was doing once she was over in the corner of the bar and come over and say hi to you. I didn't have any interaction with her that night. No. So safe to say that throughout that evening, once she was sidled up next to John O'Keefe or the friends that she was with, uh, she never turned back around and came over and even acknowledged you, correct? That's correct. So she basically ignored you the entire evening. That's not how I interpret it, no. I didn't ask you how you interpreted it. <laughs> I asked you what she did. Did she ignore you or did she pay attention to you? Objection. You can go ahead and answer that. Did she ignore you? Uh, no. So she paid attention to you. Came over and said hello, shook your hand, gave you a hug. Well, just because somebody didn't come over doesn't mean they ignored you. you yeah, do it does. <laughs> Not hug, necessarily. What, what you Pause it real quick. Yeah, because you could be not. doing, do you could have like a. He was just saying, he was like just Like a flirtatious there. look or a head nod. And you know that she's with her boyfriend. So you don't want to cause a scene. And you guys are on a DL. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, so, but that's what he was just addressing that she didn't do anything like that. Yeah, no, and I'm tracking, yeah. but I'm just saying, like, I see it. You it could, but yeah. And yeah, you left I agree with you. In your personal vehicle and drove over to, that's the Jeep. Drove the Jeep, over to yes. the waterfall, correct? I drove over to the waterfall. I'm I, sorry. I was at the waterfall. Left the waterfall, drove over to 34 Fairview. I did, yes. Um, when John walked in to the waterfall, uh, were you already there? Yes. He greeted you, you indicated, correct? Yes, I believe so. Karen walked in with him. Yes. But she did not greet you, did she? I think they kind of went like that in different directions. Right. Yes. Did she greet you? No. Right. So yeah, she walked over question. to the corner of the bar, <laughs> and John came over and greeted you, and then walked over and joined her, correct? Yes. Karen didn't stop what she was doing once she was over in the corner of the bar and come over and say hi to you. I didn't have any interaction with her that night, no. So safe to say that throughout that evening, once she was sidled up next to John O'Keefe or the friends that she was with, uh, she never turned back around and came over and even acknowledged you, correct? That's correct. So she basically ignored you the entire evening? That's not how I interpret it, no. I didn't ask you how you interpreted it. I asked you what she did. Did she ignore you or did she pay attention to you? Objection. You can go ahead and answer that. Did she ignore you? Uh, no. So she paid attention to you. Came over and said hello, shook your hand, gave you a hug. Well, just because somebody didn't come over doesn't mean they ignored you. Did she do those three things? Hug? What was the other did she thing? Say hello, shake your hand, give you a hug. No, she did not. No, she didn't do any of those things, did she? No. It's like you didn't even exist. I think that's dramatic. No, I I, I don't <laughs> look at it that way. Did she of course you me? don't. No, she did not ignore me. So she, what did she do to not ignore you? Exactly she was with you. Can I answer now? Sure. She, in my opinion, she was working the room, talking to people, saying hello, catching up. Right. The one person she didn't come over to talk to and say hello to and catch up with is you. Correct? Well, I don't, I don't know that I was the only person, but I was one of the people that she didn't say hello to. Yes. She did so, like okay. I don't feel that way. No. She actually positioned herself away from you at the other end of the table on the opposite side in the corner. Isn't that right? I don't know where she was all night. No, I don't. Know. So it's, lie. yeah, he does. He was watching her all night. It, it just gets frustrating, but I'm going to skip ahead because they're just going back and forth, back and forth. Then they have a side bar. And then here's where it starts getting really good what, yeah yeah this is this, the part where he dies oh i'm sorry let me rephrase that this is the part <laughs> where he <laughs> wants to uh run away with his tail between his legs and hide because this was where i started feeling uncomfortable for him watch his so skin color too. That's watch. what I was about to bring up is yesterday's skin color was like ridiculous. You watch how well he was and oh, yeah. and then all of a sudden it was like, boom, there it is being red. Bro. Yeah. I didn't know it was humanly possible to get that red. She There's your that's your favorite person right there. Oh really. God. Yeah. I, I, yeah. She's a winner. You can tell she's just a happy camper. 
Court is back in session. Please be seated. Thank you. Let's bring Mr. Higgins back. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. Yeah, let's get to it. Take a seat. No, I slept in my bed, but I could have started somewhere else. Did you ever testify in the previous hearing that you started somewhere else? Not that I know. Did you ever mention a couch in any of your description about what you did when you went home that night? Not that I recall. As a matter of fact, what you did mention under questioning in a different hearing was that you may have gotten something to eat, you then went to bed, and put your stuff on the nightstand next to your bed, correct? That would be the routine, yes. Um, remember this, guys. Remember. <laughs> Everything is on the nightstand. So just remember this part. After returning home that night. No. Um, you were clear when you went to sleep in your prior testimony that you put both your work and your personal phone. You had two at the time, correct? Yes. A, a personal and a, and a work cell phone. Right? Yes. You put them both on your bedside table because that's what you do every night. Is that right? Um, most often, yes. Um, as a matter of fact, you were asked whether or not you have a charging station, uh, and you said, yeah, it's right on my bedside. I don't know that I don't have a charging station. Right. You said no bedside. In other words, you keep your phone by your bedside on your bedside table. Usually. Uh, you also testified that you did not use your phone that night to go on social media, correct? That's correct. You indicated that you don't go on. He can media, remember you that. Go on social media because you don't have social media. You don't use it that, that much. I don't. You said I don't have the gram. I'm guessing that means Instagram, correct? That is correct. And you don't use Snapchat, and you quote don't do those things, correct? That's correct. All right. So you testified that the first call you received after returning home on the 29th was a call from Chief Berkowitz just before 7 a.m., which woke you up. Is that right? It was, it was around 6.30-ish, I think. Okay. Uh, your testimony previously was at some point, at some point before 7 a.m., that call was the one that woke you up. Yes. And it turns out, Mr. Higgins, that that was a lie, wasn't it? No, it wasn't a lie. When you were asked that question at a previous hearing, you didn't know that the person questioning you had your phone records, did you? I assume they did. And you were thereafter confronted with those phone records, correct? I was asked about them, yes. And those phone records established that you and Brian Albert actually exchanged not one, but two phone calls at 2.22 a.m. that morning at a time when you claimed you were in bed asleep, correct? I have no recollection of any phone calls. May I approach you on it? Yes. So everybody, that was 2.22 this is the time that he's talking, he just mentioned. And remember that, 2.22. Two, two. Yes. Poor Lolly. <laughs> he's looking at his hands. <laughs> Take a look at those two documents and tell me if you recognize at least the top one. Do they have a page number for me to follow or no? I was just asking this a little. I don't think we've introduced them. And no, they don't have a page number. But I'm going to ask that they be marked for identification at least at this point. Okay. Yeah, zoom, 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 zoom. Get to it. Do you recognize Oh, them? it's about to get to it. Just leave it. I know. Yes. May I approach? Yes. These are, you know what? I'm going to, if, I don't, if, if it's okay with the court. Maybe witness maintain the yeah. documents. Sure. <laughs> May I treat the witness? Ah, uh, he's 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 reading. Mm -hmm. You're reading. <laughs> you can't do that. I'd like to have those two documents marked only for identification with the court's permission. Okay. As one exhibit. Uh, we can do it as one exhibit. That's fine. Okay. Could you please hand those to Madam Court? Yes. Your Honor. Let's get to it. Okay, we're almost there. Waiting for it to hit. Thank you. Here we go. May I inquire? Yes. Mr. Higgins, you see the document on the lower right. 
it has a page number or a, there's an out, uh, a numeric uh, indicator 01770, in other words, 1770. On the lower right hand corner? In the right, I mean, in the red. Yeah, put the glasses on. It says 01771. Look at the next page. I think they're just out of order. You said what with the red. Am I missing something? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you were. Oh, excuse me, Mark. Uh, I'll use the one with QQ and the one with 1771 uh, because the the other numbers. When you're referencing them. Over. When you're referencing them. When I'm referencing them. Okay. Take a look at the the one that's marked with the QQ. I see it. You've so, seen that document before, correct? I think I've seen it maybe on a screen, not not in my hand. That was a. Uh, these were the records that were shown to you at a prior hearing? Yes. Okay. Um, and you acknowledge that at least the one marked QQ is a record of your calls, correct? It has my name, my telephone number, correct. And it, and it indicates that on January 29th, 2022, at, 20, at 222 and 35 seconds, you received a call from Brian Albert, duration of one second, correct? Yes. In other words, Brian Albert called you at 222 and 35 seconds, but it looks like you missed the call, correct? I see the one second call, yes. There's a second call just below that. On the same date at 222 and 52 seconds from you to Brian Albert, do you see that one? Yes. And the duration of that call is 22 seconds, mm. correct? I see that, yes. So 17 seconds after you missed a call according to these records, from Brian Albert, you called him back and there was a call mm -hmm. lasting 22 seconds. Is that right? That's what the records say. Oh Lord, here we go. Hey, if the records say it, the records say it. Okay, here we go. Can I approach? Yes. So another mysterious Siri made a phone call on behalf of him, just like she just like it did a Google search okay, for so Jennifer. Pause McCain. this real quick. Pause this real quick. Uh, so some of our viewers not might not realize, but in order for that one second, the call has to be connected. You could dial and dial and dial and it keep ringing and it hits the answer machine. It can count as what it is. Uh, mm -hmm. But that is a connection to connection. It means they lost connection the first round. So we immediately called them back. And that is yeah. an actual duration of a call, not him talking to the answer machine. I just want to clarify that to people. Yeah, absolutely. This is and a connection to connection. With the iPhone or even with an, an Android, in order to accept the call, you got to swipe. You got to swipe and, you know, mm -hmm. answer yeah. the call in order for that duration time. So I just want to clear that for our viewers. Speaking to Brian Albert in the middle of the night approximately three hours before Mr. O'Keefe's body was found in his yard, correct? No, that's not correct. And that was five minutes before 2.27 a.m. when there was a Google search for how long to die in the hole, correct? Objection. Sustain. <laughs> well, Did he doesn't know about what was text. Do you get what I'm saying? So Yeah, he does. They, they were all in it. I just think, <laughs> don't you think it's interesting that let's let's put these times together okay jen mccabe got... she totally forgot that at like 2 24 in the morning she was searching house hoss long to die in cold okay hoss long. <laughs> i don't want to i don't want to lose that hoss long, hoss long. and then it's like piled. <laughs> yeah <laughs> for cold kicking so so jen mccabe is uh, Google searching about hypothermia at 224. Meanwhile, he and Brian, uh, Brian Higgins and Brian Albert are calling each other at 222 in the morning. 
Come on, let's look at these times. Jennifer McCabe said, oh, I didn't do that Google search at 224. And now Brian Higgins is saying, oh, I didn't make that phone call at 222 at 52. That lasted 22 seconds. Really? I mean, at, it, it, at some point, I'm hoping to God, it just takes one juror. One juror, at least, has the common sense to say, well, that's funny. Well, you, maybe it was the solar flare. Tommy, that's it. Because we had a solar storm. And what happened was it caused a glitch in the matrix. And it knew to search up Hoss Long to die in the cold. And to call Brian Albert. And to have Albert's butt dial. Oh, yes. Go for While one he's second having with his penis. Higgins calling him back. For 22 mm -hmm. seconds. But Brian Albert claims, oh, I, I didn't make that call because I was having sex with my wife. Well, thanks for putting that on blast. But OK, let's keep going. He lied about that under oath in that prior proceeding by saying he's turning red. I don't remember this phone call. Objection. Did you? Yeah, he's having sex with his wife at the same time. She's looking at how to die in the cold. I don't remember that phone call. I always tell the truth. Did you? That's lie a lie. Under oath, sir? No, I did not. Did you tell us if you did? Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. No. That's the answer. Oh, no. That, Look, you see, red. You remember the body language yeah. that I talked about in previous? Notice he went like this. Because no, he wouldn't tell. Record. And 22 seconds is quite an amount of time. Would you agree? It's 22 seconds. As a matter of fact, it, it's about this long with the court's permission. The court is quick as you get it done. This argument. Tommy, you missed it. Hold on. This Remember, is I actually, watched this yesterday. I know, but our some of our viewers haven't. You can't say I missed it. Seconds. As a matter of fact, it's about this long with the court's permission. The court does not give permission. That's argument, Mr. Jackson. No, it's Here. not. So let's do it, shall we? Okay. So we're going to do this. I have my little timer here, okay? And we're going to do 20 seconds starting now. Well, how's your day been? It's been pretty good. How's yours? Uh, it's been so-so. Been watching Great Danes from my mom's. Great Danes are great. Hannah gets to pick oh, up her dog. I love them. They're yeah. great. I'm in we just had a conversation. Right we just had a conversation. That's just 20 seconds. That's kind of a long time. And it, it was about nonsense, but it was enough to get across like, hey, hey, man. Did you dump the body? A fight. We're, we're trying to do this. Uh, no, er, hey, did you get a hold of Jen to make sure she got her story straight? Do you think he's dead by now? How much longer the, do you think it's going to take? The greatest part next is just the timeline of him going into the office. <laughs> oh, bless it. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> you want to count off 22 seconds. That's an uncomfortably long time, is it not? Yes. No. It's awkward. long enough to have a conversation, isn't it? I didn't have a conversation. Is 22 seconds long enough to have a conversation? No. You can't, a human being can't have a conversation in 22 seconds? Sure they could. I don't think it's anything of substance. Okay, so that's my question. Is it 22 seconds long enough to have a conversation? Yes. I don't agree with it, no. They're going to fight on every single thing, and it's unnecessary. Viewers, what do you think? Did we just have well, a full conversation? You were asked about this, and you were shown these records, that prior hearing... You had an explanation for what that 22 second call may have been and what the prior call may have been, correct? Hey, pause yes. it real quick. What was your explanation? Well, I used a phrase that people Hold people on. commonly yeah. used as a butt dial. Good Lord. So apparently, I didn't know that like the stars were aligned and Brian Albert claims in his testimony that he butt dialed Brian Higgins and Brian Higgins claims he but dialed Brian Albert at the exact same time. So two things. First thing, I love his flashy bracelet, the the lawyer. Mm -hmm. Anyways, on a real note though, how do you end the butt dial? You gotta you gotta hang up. So someone had to answer, right? Yeah. So wouldn't you well, hear how do you of, uh, butt dial somebody with an iPhone that's turned off on the bed's nightstand? I mean, that's he has to have a big ass. 
<laughs> and if if he called immediately back, that means that he overheard them having sex, supposedly. You know what I'm saying? For 22 yeah, seconds. You like, oh, I got to hang up. You know what I'm saying? Like, yes. It's just beyond frustrating. But I'm also not surprised because see here. Look, here's the thing. I actually do support law enforcement. Um, and I have a lot of respect for law enforcement. Officers. I do, too. I do, too. Um, Brian Higgins, Brian Albert are seasoned police officers. They know how these things go down. And, for example, this is not to say that they weren't good cops. Brian Albert, he was a phenomenal cop. He apprehended the Craigslist killer. Did you know he handled that case and he broke that case? He also tracked down and arrested the kidnapper and rapist, Victor Pena. He also helped crack the case forever and solidify it with DNA, the Boston Strangler. He was a phenomenal mm -hmm. cop. And they have testified in court over 100 times, both of them. So they know how it works. The game that they're playing, though is semantics and they align their stories in a way that they know there's no way to prove otherwise but it gets even the stories are crazy gets a little bit crazier it's insane so you think it's possible that you may have butt dialed brian albert for a 22 second call that you're not aware of I think it's possible that he could have been inadvertently called back, but I have no recollection of that, nor did I have any conversation with anybody. But you admitted that you lived alone, correct, Mr. Higgins? That's correct. You have an iPhone at the time. Yes. Matter of fact, that number, for the, reflecting those records, is in fact, or was in fact, an iPhone. Is that right? Was. Yes. You already indicated under oath that you Keyword. don't use your iPhone. You keep it on your bedside table. Is that right? Most often, yes. There's no one, nobody else in your room. Is that right? That's correct. And you had your ringer on because you got a, you were awakened the next morning by a call from Chief Berkowitz, right? Yes, the ringer was on. When somebody calls you and you miss the call, there's a notification that shows up on that iPhone. Isn't that right? Uh, I don't know how mine set up at the time. I don't know. If you open up your phone app and you go to recents, it shows all the missed calls, correct? Yeah. I think you can get to them, yes. And you know that the iPhone does not automatically call people back. That is not a thing, right? <laughs> I missed a call from someone. It's not just going to automatically re-ring them. <laughs> it's I, not yes, a I thing. I think we both know that, yes. So to call somebody back, you have to go on your iPhone, open it up from a locked position, navigate to a phone application, then navigate to a contact, and then make a call. Correct? Objection. Sustained. You can break it down. Sure. Compound. In order to call somebody back, if you've missed a call, you first have to unlock your iPhone. You would have to, yes. You can do that either through Face ID or through a four or six digit passcode, right? Yes. Which Face don't ID tell me is code, that whole. Did you have a four or a six <laughs> digit passcode locking your iPhone at the time? I don't know if it was a digit code or a Face ID. Well, if you have a Face ID, you have to have a digit code as well, right? I guess so. Okay. Did you open your phone with your Face ID or a, a multi digit code? I have no recollection of answering the phone or calling anybody back. Of course. You also have to navigate, once the phone is unlocked, you have to navigate to the phone app, correct? I don't know necessarily if you if you, if you unlock the face, really it heavily. would be right there. I don't, I've never thought about she it. She looks pissed. Once you unlock the phone she's app, you have to dead in the face. phone on the screen with your finger in order to make a call, correct? You would have to hit at least one button, I guess. At least one, right? Yes. So that's three or four interactions with the phone that have to be physically undertaken to just make one call, right? But I didn't make any calls. So how'd you butt dial? <laughs> I didn't make any calls. I have no recollection of any calls. Nor did I speak with anybody. Look at her. Her nose is flaring. She is so mad. She's breathing oh, yeah. heavy. She is so mad. I think it's sinking in. After he had shown something these phone records at that. that prior hearing. In her mind. In that hearing, at least, you finally admitted that you did, in fact, call Brian Albert back. But this time you claimed the two of you just sort of sat in silence. Isn't that right? Objection. 
So I'm going to sustain, sustain it in that form. You can ask it appropriately, Mr. Jackson. Did you yes. ever previously testify that you did in fact make the call, but you did not have a conversation during the course of the call? What I think I testified was something must have happened, but I didn't have any phone call. Do you remember being asked, quote, did you call him back, end quote, and you answered yes. And then there was a question. There was a, there was a series of questions there. That's, that's, that's only a fragment of what I said. I'm, I'm not done yet, Mr. Higgins. Can you answer my question? Yes. To the question, did you call him back, your answer was yes, correct? I think it was kind of I must have. Then you were asked, well, the answer was Yes, and then there was a colloquy back and forth where you spoke over each other's words, right? It was dialogue back and forth about this whole thing, yes. Look at how red he is now. Oh, you can see Lord. behind the hairline. Yes. Bro, his ears. Doing the little sparkle thing for him. Yes. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Pac-Man just having it off. He did. Yes. What's the question? Please read it for me. Did you did you call him back? Oh, yes. voice crack. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well. Well. Hey, pause it real quick. He then said, a little "How many?" And I'm amazed it didn't get brought up. But he said he drank a lot at the bar and then drove home. So we know he's intoxicated, right? But how mm -hmm. many drinks did he really have at the bar? Don't know. And that's uh, something he, like. But I mean, he drove home, but that he drove over to the Alberts as well. Yeah, that's what I'm saying is I don't think he was as drunk as he's making himself out to be. No. Like he had a couple no. of beers before showing up and, and then, or a couple of whiskeys beforehand. And then he was down in whiskeys while he's there. He doesn't know how many he had while he was there. Right. And then drove home. I. Here's the thing. I've been drunk and you'll have your drunk dials. You know what I'm saying? But like, I've not, I've never done that. But I have, this is uh, hours after he left the bar. Yeah, I'm not and I left the Alberts. My earphone fell out. But yes, I'm just saying like, in theory, I don't think he drank as much as he claims to be a, that he drank that night. Oh, he's not claiming that he was that drunk. He's claiming the opposite because if he was drunk and he drove, then he'd lose his badge. So he's not admitting that. And he's also under investigation by the FBI. So I don't think he's admitting that. I don't think he's alluding to that. I think he's, he's well, just in the said, beginning, he said he just had a couple of whiskeys. And he didn't know how many he had at the bar. Cause I yeah. remember hearing that. And so mm -hmm. I was just saying in general, I just, it's just <laughs> the holes I'm falling in these holes. Mm -hmm. And I'm just just remember, you can't fill in those holes with yeah, theories not or to. what we think. It's hard not to. You just have to go on. If there's holes in a story and those holes are enough to cause reasonable doubt, that's a not guilty. Well, and I'm just saying from what his words were and even mm -hmm. now he's kept he's getting caught by calling back. Right. You know what I'm saying? He's getting caught. That's what I'm saying about the holes. I'm not leading yeah. into it. I'm saying from what his testimony was. Right. Went down. He usually does the Irish thing and doesn't go down to the bar, but he went down to the bar after having a couple of whiskeys and he doesn't know how many he had at the bar. I he don't said two to four. Was, so I just he don't said, think he drank yeah. as much as he said. He's, yeah. He said he had two to four drinks at the waterfall and two to four drinks um, at the hillside. So, I mean, and he's a big boy, you know, I, I don't think he, to me, in my opinion, it didn't come off that he was trying to play off that he was drunk at all. Um, no, that's not what I'm getting at. I'm just saying it just feels like there's holes in the story. Like, it just oh, yeah, there's definitely holes in matching, the story. And I'm falling in all these holes as I'm trying to follow along with them. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, so. a little bit further in that same conversation. I did not have a conversation, correct? I did not have a conversation with anybody. And the question following that was, you just listened to it's the phone, redder. what someone was telling you? Answer, it's possible that the phone picked up on the other end and nobody said anything. And then I terminated the call, end quote. That's what you said at the under other hearing under, correct? Yes or no? 
Can I see it? Sure. He's like, oh, snap, I forgot about that. Oh, no. Nah. That's what he's thinking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's get yeah, to... Yes. There you go. Same thing. <laughs> Thank you. The bottom portion in pink. <clears throat> if you could read that answer to yourself, please. I will say I like his tie. You have that in mind, sir? No. Can I have a minute, please? Are you going to read the whole thing? It's just supposed to help refresh your memory. And I think he got his hair did because, look, that's just like precise. That part is killing me. Yeah, it's I'm, like a little bit of hair. And I'm not good at, you know, my part's usually down the center and it spreads yeah. out. But like. Man, that's fierce. I got to hand it to him. Yeah. Yes. He's trying to be all suave. He's got it. Beard all touched up. Look at that. Does that refresh your Looking. recollection about what, how you answered that question? Yes. And your answer was, it's uh -oh. possible that the phone picked up on the Getting internet, redder. And nobody said anything. And then I terminated the call. That's the, that's the only thing. Meaning it's, meaning it's possible it could have happened. That's not what you possible said. It could have happened that you had a 22-second call with Brian Albert, correct? I did not have a 22-second call with Brian Albert. There was no conversation. You've had some time to think about this 2.22 a.m. call, correct? Since that last testimony. Some time to think about it? Yeah. I haven't really thought about it, no. So over, really? over a year, you haven't even considered the fact that you were caught with a phone record lying about not having a conversation with Objection. Brian Albert at 2.22 in the morning. Objection. Argumentative. Mr. Higgins, what was so important that you and Brian Albert needed to discuss something at 2.22 in the morning? Don't watch him zoom in. There was no discussion. I never talked to Brian Albert. And why the 22 second phone call, sir? Objection. Sustained. Why sustained? Oh, asked and answered. Look at his face. Look at his face. Then why the 22 second phone call? Why did you call him back? You said you called him back before. Look at that face. Yeah. Look, can we have a moment before, of silence? I didn't make a phone call to, uh, I guess I did make this phone call. And I don't remember it. it. And I love how he keeps looking at the prosecution. Like, <laughs> what do I say? Help. Help. Well, See? yeah, that's not a good what you did after you woke up on January 29th, 2022. That was obviously a memorable day in your mind. Correct? It was a sad day. The very first person you spoke to after woke, waking up was who? Well, I believe I said I got the call from Chief Berkowitz. That's not my question. Say that again. Who's the first person you spoke to on the phone that morning when you woke up? Brian Elvin. <clears throat> Whose idea was it for you to drive to Brian Albert's house that morning? It was my idea. Was it important to you to speak with Brian Albert in person rather than over text or phone call? No, it was important to support the people that were there. So, of course, you drove over to his house and had an opportunity to speak to him in person without any law enforcement presence, correct? I was there with everybody, not just Brian Albert. And Brian Albert was in the house and you were in the house, right? That's correct. So you had access to him and others without any law enforcement there. Is that right? That's correct. He's trying to figure out where this is going. And he can't. As soon as you got off the phone with Brian Albert that morning, who did you call? At 722 AM, if you were I think I, I think I might've called Chief Rekowitz back. So as soon as you got off the phone with Brian Albert, first thing in the morning, the next call you made was to Chief Berkowitz. Is that yeah, right? Yes, because he was the he had called me first. Yes, I called him back. Did you request from Chief Berkowitz any information that he may have had concerning the investigation surrounding John O'Keefe being found at 34 Fairview that morning? No. Were you trying to see how much law enforcement knew right away? Absolutely. I didn't even know what happened. Were you trying to gather information about what happened so that you would know what happened? Objection. I'll allow it. Is no. That's what we're trying to do. No, Your Honor. 
Getting what redder. did Chief Berkowitz tell you about his knowledge of John O'Keefe's body being found just after 6 a.m.? Objection. Hearsay. Did you tell Chief Berkowitz that you had been with John O'Keefe and you were at the crime scene the night before? Objection. Sustain, you can ask that differently. Did you inform Chief Berkowitz that you had been with John O'Keefe the night before? Objection. I'll allow it. I believe I may have told him at some point that I saw John at the waterfall. Did you tell Chief Berkowitz that you had been at 34 Fairview? I believe I did. Did you tell him that your vehicle was parked just feet away from where John's body was discovered? No, because I didn't know where he was discovered. Did you tell Chief Berkowitz that you and Brian Albert had had a call at 2.22 in the morning? Objection. Did you tell Chief Berkowitz that you had been flirting with John O'Keefe's girlfriend in the weeks prior to his death? Look how red he is. No. Did you ever tell that Chief would have Berkowitz made him a suspect? Your interest in this read? No, I don't believe so. That's pertinent information that makes him a suspect. It gives him motive. What's funny about that last question is if you watch at first, he's like this, and then he's like. He nods his head yes. Did you tell Chief Berkowitz? Oh, he's getting really red now. You had seen Mr. O'Keefe and Miss Reed the night before, and then Miss Reed had ignored you. Jackson. Sustain. Say, we'll get back over at prosecution. Thank you, Ron. If I may have just a moment. Okay, I'm going to zoom, zoom through the moment while they're waiting. It. I'm sure you would have. I'm asking, did they ask? No. They didn't ask to search it. They didn't ask to inspect it. No. Um, oh, just going over his car. It's not really consequential, but there is something that is. Here we go. One quick oh, yeah, he's going through data. He's going through. Yes. Look at the time entry for 923 and 39 seconds. Sorry. Thank you. May I proceed? She yes. does like she has shark eyes. It's page 3015, <laughs> which actually is in order. That's not reverse chronological. It's the second to the last page. Oh, she just had an epiphany. I want to know. She just figured something out. She's dying to say something. She's dying to say something. I want to have it. Okay. Oh, look at that. Got an associate there highlight. Look at all of those records. Entry from the bottom. I see it. Does that indicate uh, that, that this all occurred on 129.22? This entry, at least? Well, I mean, I only, on that eighth entry, I see that that's that's associated with my name. I don't know what the other ones are associated with. Right. It would be other individuals in Canton PD. I mean, this is the entire log for 129, right? Okay, but but, but what all I'm saying is that just my name is next to that. I don't see any other name. So I'm talking right. about his key okay. code so getting in. 2022. I'm just trying to orient you. At 120, I'm sorry, 127 and 52 seconds. I see. Access granted Brian Higgins rear entry to secure corridor, rear entry to secure corridor, correct? Yes. All right. So that appears to be what the the log entry or the key swipe entry looks like when it's logged, correct? Yes. If you look at page 2967. I'm sorry, I said it backwards, 2976. He's a slow reader. Well, you know, he's got to read everything on the page. Yeah, he's trying to reflect, uh, refresh his okay. recollection, but take a look at- Do you said 2976? That's Bates page 2976. That's the bottom right hand. I, I see it, yes. Look at the time entry for 923 and 39 seconds.
Nine twenty three and what? Thirty nine. Good lord. And that's on twenty nine. Oh, for seventy six. Should be. I... Forget there. Give me the time again, please. Oh, Can we do it this way. May I approach? Yes. <laughs> this is an exact copy. Yeah, it, this time's all over the place. My apologies. That's okay. Copy. All right. Thank you. <laughs> it said, look here. Let me hook you up. At 923.39, I'm sorry, have you got that in, in mind? I do, I see it, it's highlighted. At 923.39, that shows that you were granted access to the Sally Port to front exit, front entry to Sally Port, correct? Yes. There's only one Sally Port at Canton PD, correct? Yes, and there's a door on each side of the Sally Port. Two yes. bay doors, right? Two bay doors on each side, yes. And then there's a, a pass through. personal pass-through door as well. Yes. May I approach your honor? Yes. <clears throat> I want to try to speed this up just a bit. Yeah. Um, because it's small print. Notice how less order. white his face is now. Yeah, he's getting On page redder. 976, there's also an entry. Same page. Uh, should be right above that. 92350, showing that you uh, you were granted access from booking to Sally Port as well, correct? Okay, 2976, and what was the Same time? Page. Yes. It's about maybe six entries above. Six entries up. You'll look for time 923 and 50 seconds. I see. Yes. All right. And that shows that you were granted access to the Sally Port and then from Sally Port to Booking, correct? Mel, you're going to have to close that window behind you. It's I can booking hear the to Sally Port, Sally Port to Booking. <laughs> Yes. Of course. Of course. This was a planned cyber raid. I think so. Yeah. No, absolutely. I'm trying to break it up. Good medical Lord. emergency. I know it goes for like two minutes. It feels like that's a fire. See, see, why else would you do that right next to the courthouse? And the windows open. It's like, is the courthouse on fire? It sounds like it's right there outside. It now does. it's going away. May I inquire, Your Honor? Yes. Uh, that indicate I have no idea what the last question was. I'll see if I can make it. <laughs> At nine twenty-three and fifty seconds in the morning, um, you were granted access, booking to Sally Port and Sally Port to booking, meaning swiped the key card go in the door going from booking to Sally. Port. <clears throat> How, how many times does he need to look at it? He's trying to find a way out, but he yes. can't. Okay. Uh, I don't want to belabor this because Ooh. we get bogged down into it all day long. Would you have any quarrel if those logs indicated that you were moving in and around Canton PD at 928, 953, 953, 954, 954, 1140, et cetera? We can look at every one of them if you want to. Well, that doesn't refresh your recollection. It would not be uncommon for me to move around Canton PD at, at, at various times or dates, right. middle of the night, during the day. But just because I, I, I swiped in somewhere and then you have a swipe at the end of the day doesn't mean I was there the whole day. I could have left. I could have come back. And I truly don't have a recollection. But I, I'm pretty sure I wasn't there all day. Fair enough. If we moved from 1140 to 1144, 1145, 1147... Uh, 11.51, 11.52, and then jump to 2.05, would that be an explanation where you might have gone out for lunch, 11.52? Could have. Okay, come back. If yes. there's a 2.05 and 56 entry, then obviously you're there, right? If, if, up, if up the card was swiped, I was there. I mean, you're not, giving that, you're not giving that card to anybody else. No, I'm not. No way, right? 
let's just look at 2905 because I want you to be comfortable. 20, uh, page 2905. <laughs> and let's look at that 205. To be comfortable. <laughs> I'm at 2905. Where would you like me to look? About right there. At your mom. <laughs> this might be a little easier. Basically, I'm going to zoom zoom through this because he. Um, he just... I see it. Okay. Okay. So that would indicate that you were back at Canton PD at at least 205.56 and you were granted access Sally Port to front door, correct? That's what it says, yes. Okay. Um, he can't, for the life of him, figure out where this is going. At 3.10 p.m., you called Brian Albert's brother, Kevin Albert, correct? I don't know. It's possible. Okay. If, I mean, I don't remember every phone call I made that day. Understood. Do you remember talking to Kevin Albert? I don't. Not, it, so you don't remember what you discussed with him? No, no. Do you remember that it was a 12-minute phone call? No, I don't, I don't remember having any phone call, but I'm sure it's possible that we spoke. Do you remember Kevin Albert providing you any information about the ongoing investigation into John O'Keefe's death? No. Did you ask him about additional information concerning John O'Keefe's death? No. Were you providing details back to Brian Albert that you were receiving while at Canton PD? Absolutely not, no. Do you recall that two minutes after you cleared the call with Kevin Albert, you then called Brian Albert? It's, it's possible. So I think the question was, do you remember? Do you remember that? Your Honor, there was a lot of phone calls made that day. It was, a, it was an upsetting day. I spoke to multiple people at multiple times. I have to agree with this statement. I, I don't do. remember I don't half remember. the phone calls. You know I, I think he's like, being how honest. How am I going to remember? Yeah. I think he's being honest. I do. I do. He breathes really heavy. Yes. Oh, we're getting there. We're getting there. Let's get to it. Let's, okay. Come on, come on, come in. Get there. He's got to read. That's your only role in this. Hold on, Canton PD. No, I wasn't. Did you provide okay. any information to? You want me to go back a little bit more? No, I did not. No, yes, no, yes, yes, yes. Because there's a key element right, in uh, there sorry, about Brian, his Robert role. Calls you at three twenty-four, correct? Yes. And you two speak for six minutes. Is that right? Six minutes, five seconds. Yes. May I approach? Yes. Does that refresh your recollection that you made those calls? I'm based on the record. Yes. Um, was that just a coincidence that you were talking to Brian Albert and Kevin Albert within minutes of one another? Yeah, I mean, there was a lot going on that day. People were upset. I, and, and I don't remember the phone calls. It, I don't deny making the phone calls. I just don't remember them. Do you remember providing information that you were learning from Kevin Albert to Brian Albert? Absolutely not. My yeah. earbud fell out of my ear. <laughs> <laughs> that was a hell of a gulp. May I hear? <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, my ginger ale. So just below those phone calls to Kevin Albert and Brian Albert, there's two additional phone calls that you had with Chief Berkowitz and then Brian Albert again, correct? Yes. Mr. Higgins, it looks an awful lot like you're gleaning information from Kent PD. Were you doing that? Objection. So I sustain the objection in that form. You can ask one part of that question. Sure. You can ask one part. Were you getting any information from Kent and PD? No, I wasn't. Did you provide any information to Brian Albert? No, I did not. 
based on any conversations or conduct at Canton PD? No. May I approach? Yes. He leaned forward with that. in fact, on the phone with all of those interested parties throughout the day, you'll agree. Uh, I was answer that. Okay. There's yes, no you're objection. You can um, I would, yes, they're, they're friends and I was on the phone with them. Yes. And sir, you were not on duty that day, correct? No. Did the judge a just police officer, correct? That's correct. You were told them to answer this it. investigation in any formal capacity, were you? I was not. As a matter of fact, you're a witness in a homicide investigation. That's your only role in this, correct? That's correct, but they're still my friends, yes. And yet you're still having conversations with Kevin Albert at Kenton PD while you're at Kenton PD, correct? Not about this. And you're having conversations with Chief Berkowitz of Canton PD while you're at Canton PD, correct? I had conversations with him, but not about this, no. And you're consistently through the day calling <clears throat> Brian Albert, aren't you? I had conversations with Brian Albert. <laughs> Albert. John was found on his lawn. Yes, of course I had phone conversations with him. I want to take you back for a second to a couple of other <clears throat> entries, including one at 357, one at 358, and one at 407. I'm going to draw your attention to 2885 and 2886. Once you have the pages, I'll give you the times once again. Come in. <laughs> 2885. 2885 and 2886. We'll start with 2886 and then work backward. Okay. First entry is at 357 and 54 seconds. Hello. <laughs> I feel like we're in that song, Tainted Love. See it? Bum, bum. Brian Higgins booking to Sally Port, correct? It says Brian Higgins, communication to pedestrian Sally Port, communication to pedestrian Sally Port. Look at the one just above it. That's 358.24. Look at 357.54. Or the one I, it probably is going to be just below it. It's reverse. You said 357.54, correct? Correct. That's what I just read. Got it. Look at mm -hmm. five, six entries below at 357.36. 357.36. I see it. Access granted, Brian Higgins. Booking to Sally Port, Sally Port to booking. Stop breathing more. into the mic, Brian. On page 2885, look for 40747. Four oh seven forty seven. Correct. I have it. Access granted, Brian Higgins booking to Sally Port, booking to Sally Port. And there's no record in that document of you exiting. Correct. <laughs> That's just booking to Sally Port. Yes. I don't. Yeah, there's there's no, no record. I don't know if it records you going up. That's fine. No there's no record of it. Correct. Not that I can see here. No. I'm sorry. And you're aware that that's about 90 minutes before Karen Reed's SUV was delivered to that Sally Port, correct? No, I'm not aware of that. Uh, you're aware that her car ended up in that Sally Port where you were at 536. Oh, I'm crap. aware her car ended up there, yes. Mm. Are you aware that there was other evidence that was also being held in the Sally Port? Objection. Sustained. Why? Did you see any other evidence uh. in the Sally Port related to this case? No. Did you see a bag, a grocery bag with six solo cups there? Objection. Did you see anything that seemed out of the ordinary there? All I would do is use that as a cut through. I did not see anything. Hmm. I'm not sure I'm believing you, Brian. That at five, well, let me ask you this. 
you and Chief Herkowitz were moving in and through, at least in some parts of the day, in and through Kenton PD together, correct? At some points we might have been together. I'm not, I mean, we we weren't together all day. Matter of fact, he was also in the Sally Port around the same time you were, correct? I don't recall that, no. But the records would reflect that, right? The records that are in front of you? Objection. Sustained. He's so uncomfortable. He's shifting in his suit. You were in the Sally Port. Constantly last shifting time. in the seat. You're logged into the Sally Port. It's 407. Do you remember seeing Chief Berkowitz at Sally Port at 414? No. And and if that says that I'm logged, that, that could be me cutting Mr. through. Higgins, all I'm asking you through I'm not asking you what you did. I'm asking right. you where you were. Yeah. I don't know where I was at that specific time. Well, you walked into the Sally Port. We know that. If I walked in, I correct cutting through, yes. Right. Was Chief Berkowitz in the Sally Port at 414? Not that I recall, no. Was he there at 430? I, I don't remember ever seeing him in the Sally Port, no. Was he there at 433? He asked an answer. I don't remember ever seeing Chief Berkowitz yeah, in the Sally Port. I had to agree with you on that one. Objection. Sustain. Let's move through this, please. Finally, was he there at 536 and 37 seconds at the same time Karen Reed's vehicle was delivered? He just said. I don't remember. I agree with you. I asked and answered. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then they go to sidebar. Okay, so this is when they get back from sidebar. Oh, right here. Conversations. Hold on. Let me go back. Okay, they're about to come back from sidebar. And I want everybody to really pay attention here to what he what happens. Because you're seeing it with witness, witness after witness for the prosecution. Okay, the, um, the interview was not at the police station. It was not, no. Um, by the time you interviewed with Trooper Proctor, you had already had numerous conversations with Brian Albert. Is that safe to say? Well, the interview was with both Trooper, Trooper Proctor, Trooper Buk Sergeant Buchanick, yep. and um, of course I've talked to Brian Albert because of, of what took place. I, that was a yes or no question. <laughs> yeah, of course I've talked to him, yes. Okay, and the answer is yes, right? Can we agree? The answer is yes. Thank you. Well, By the time you spoke with Trooper Proctor and Trooper Butnick, you had already had numerous conversations with Chief Berkowitz, correct? Yes. You had already had uh, numerous conversations with Kevin Albert. Yes. You had already had this meeting with the Alberts and the McCabe's over at 34 Fairview, is that right? I went to the house and discussed this case, as you d earlier described in your testimony. I discussed what, what, what we were trying to figure out what happened. You discussed this case, Mr. Higgins. Well, at that point, it wasn't a case. Okay, I'm not parsing words about what a case is versus a matter versus an issue. You understood my question, didn't you? Yes. Is there a reason you don't want to answer that question? I don't have a problem. Objection, Your Honor. So what I wanted to point out here, Tommy, is he's doing exactly what... Matt McCabe, Brian Albert, Chris Albert, and especially Jennifer McCabe all did. And I feel like they prepped for this. They're playing semantics. He fully understands what's going on. He knows the questions that are being posed. Um, but he's, you know, doing the dip, dodge, duck, and dive kind of thing <laughs> and leaning on I semantics. I, so talking about semantics, let's say, when does a case start being a case? I would have asked something like that. And the only reason why I felt like this was a missed question by the defense is when's a case? Because as soon as he was like, it wasn't a case. Well, but it has to be because the bodies, you know what I'm saying? You're already started collecting her car booking's already there so it's already started as a case yeah and the but the defense Evidence does collecting. pick up on this yes I had numerous conversations with chief Berkowitz. so watch how correct? the the yes. defense we already had uh, numerous conversations with kevin albert yes you had already had this meeting with the alberts and the mccabe's over at 34 fairview is that right i went to the house and discussed this case <clears throat> As you d earlier described in your testimony, I discussed what what, what we, we try to figure out what happened. You discussed this case, Mr. Higgins. Well, at that point, it wasn't a case. 
okay, I'm not parsing words about what a case is versus a matter versus an issue. You understood my question, didn't you? Yes. Is there a reason you don't want to answer that question? I don't have a problem. Objection, Your Honor. Well, I, I feel you're trying to make it sound like something it wasn't. It was, I'm not it, trying it, to make it sound like anything, sir. I'm asking a question. Had you discussed this case or the issues surrounding this case with those folks? I did discuss people? things when I went back to the house, yes. And that I was know. before you met with Trooper Proctor and Trooper Buchanan, correct? Yes, that's correct. You had already spent an enormous amount of time at Canton PD. We've just gone through those records. Is that right? I have been at Canton PD, yes. And you had been able to talk to, you had access at least to all the officers, correct? What do you mean by, can you Anybody that was coming and going at Canton PD. Access for what purpose? Just to walk by them, to hear what they were Good saying, Lord. what they were doing. Yeah, it's not what I was doing, no. I didn't, He's making this worse. I'm not worse. accusing you of doing anything. I'm saying you had access to the individuals within the Canton PD, correct? To interact if, if needed, yes. And. He's dumb. Very obviously, you had access to the Sally Port. I had access, yes, and that's a cut through I used all the time. We know, we know. Everything that was in it. Bow, Correct. right there, mic drop. Um, I wouldn't need anything in it. Uh, you need it was only to, uh, after all that that Michael Proctor thought that you were worthy of a conversation. Objection. I'll, I'll, rephrase it. I'll rephrase it. It was only after all of that that you were interviewed by Michael Proctor and Trooper Buchner, correct? I wasn't interviewed to the following days. That's correct. At some point on February 4th, Chief Berkowitz called you to formally, I'm sorry, to personally inform you that he had personally found taillight at 34 Fairview. Is that right? Hmm. He did. He did tell me that. Yes. And to be clear, that's the same Ken Berkowitz that you were with in the Sally Port. I don't recall being in the Sally Port with him. No. Right. What did you do with that information when you learned from Chief Berkowitz that there was, that he personally saw a taillight piece as he drove by? <clears throat> I didn't do anything with the information. Did you call Brian Albert? No, Brian Albert called me. Yeah. You were asked a specific question in the other proceeding in June of 2023, correct? I don't know if it was the specific question. I was asked a series of questions on how the phone calls came in. That's what I was asked. And your answer was, it's 100% probable that I told him about that, meaning I told Brian Albert about 100 my conversation probable? with Ken Berkowitz, correct? <laughs> it's so you it's mean possible. You was that your statement or not? It was my statement. I don't think that would be a I thought about it. Yes. Probable at 100%. I don't know if I changed my statement, but I think the way the phone calls came in is Brian Albert told me, you're not going to believe what was found on the front lawn. And then I believe Ken Berkowitz told me he found the taillight. And I'm referring to Look the taillight from the both read. of them. I didn't provide any information to anybody. Well, information was provided to me. What you actually said was it's 100% probable that I told him about that. Yes, 100%. I'm not <laughs> hiding that fact. But you're asking me if I recollect specifically. I know I called him after Objection, that. your honor. Yeah, he's reading. All right, so to the record. You can't do that. Too many facts. Go slowly. Sure. You said, yes, I'm a, yes, 100%, correct? In that testimony, I did, yes. And then in that testimony, you went on to say, I'm not hiding that fact. But you're asking me if I recollect specifically, correct? I don't have it in front of me. That's what you're oh, telling me. Oh, good Lord, stop you it. You went on to say, I know I called him after that phone call, correct? I don't know. And you Again, went on to say, if that's when Chief Berkowitz told me if I, listen, I didn't do anything wrong in this, end quote. That was your statement. Objection. Prior hearing, correct? So I'm going to strike the end. Okay, after they come back from the sidebar, we then he has to have a proffer, okay? So this is the part that is most interesting. Okay, hold on. They're on a break. They're on a break. They're on the sidebar. Okay, so you're going to see the next to your client. The, Mr. Jackson's going to make an offer of proof of a question he's about to ask. So you see this guy here? That's Brian Higgins' personal attorney that he had to bring to these proceedings. And... The jury doesn't know why, but it, it I know why, but I'm not going to say because the jury, if the jury doesn't know, nobody else needs to know right now. Your client or a couple of questions he's about to ask your client. Does it make any sense to me that somebody has counsel and the counsel is not aware of a potential issue? So you'll hear the offer of proof. 
I'll let you speak to Mr. Higgins before this actually happens before the jury. Could I just have him? Yes. Now, this is the first time I've ever heard of counsel having counsel outside of counsel. <laughs> Well, he he does have rights, so he needs to know when he would have to, if ever, if he needs to plead the fifth or anything else like that. All right. May I hear him? Yes. Uh, the witness has indicated that he utilized federal resources for personal gain. The specifics of that testimony have been as follows. He indicated that he contacted Matt Kelch, a federal agent. He indicated that he utilized a federal facility that was, he called it an unsecure facility, but it's federal, a federal facility notwithstanding. And that the two of them, he and Agent Kelch, utilized a federal, res utilized federal resources in the form of some kind of a machine, as the, the witness indicated, for his own personal gain so that he could, as a witness, in no official capacity, work in any official case, and in, in Matt Kelch's capacity as, a, as an individual rather than an agent, they both work together to download certain information from the witness's phone in anticipation of turning that highly selected, highly curated information over to law enforcement so that he could later ultimately destroy his phone, which this witness in fact did. Okay, so it's not entire. I disagree with you. Yeah. I don't think it's reached that level. Um, his mean? testimony was that he went to a kiosk on the first floor where all local police departments uh, can go. It's unrestricted. It's on the first floor. And we just got to the part about a machine in the kiosk when you mentioned an FBI resource. So what is your question? What, what questions do you intend to ask this witness now? Whether he's aware that under 5 CFR 2635.702, it is a federal offense to use his public office, <clears throat> to use any public office for his own private gain or for the gain of persons or organizations with which you are associated personally. In other words, an FBI agent or an ATF agent cannot use federal resources for personal gain. Hmm. The fact that he contacted an ATF agent, the fact that he utilized a, uh, a facility that is owned by the federal government, run by the federal government, paid for by taxpayer dollars, and the fact that he used a machine that is owned by the federal government to download certain information for his own personal gain, that personal gain being these are the yep. curated texts that I'm going to turn over to law enforcement, that's a federal offense. All right, so those questions are going to be asked. I don't know that there's been an objection to them. I'm not sure I'm going to let them in. Um, but I wanted to give you the opportunity to speak privately with your client in the back room there. Can you do it in short order? Or do you need I, can, I can do it in about 10 seconds. Okay. Sure. All right. See if you feel the need. So, so why don't we go, why don't you go back and talk to him? I'll stop. I feel like the judge has given him an out. Mm -hmm. Why don't you go back there and talk to him? Okay. So he comes Mr. back. Uh, Mr. Higgins, you indicated that the phone was hooked up to some sort of machine. At the FBI uh, at the FBI kiosk, correct? Yes. Um, you're aware, sir, that under 5 CFR 2635.702, you may not use your public office for your own personal or private gain or for the gain of persons or organizations with which you are associated personally under pain of a federal offense, correct? Objection. No, Your Honor. Are you aware that under 5 CFR 2634.704, it's a felony to quote. Objection, your honor, as to reading. Go ahead and finish the question. For an employee, I'm sorry, an employee has a duty to preserve and conserve government property and shall not use such property or allow its use for other than authorized purposes. Were you aware of that federal regulation? That objection sustained. Sir. Notwithstanding those regulations, you utilize the services of Matt Kelch as a friend and a colleague, but utilizing federal resources to pull information off your phone, correct? Objection. Sustained is to that form. In fact, uh, you were successful in getting information off your phone, which is the text that you turn over to the Commonwealth, correct? Objection. In that form, you're almost there, Mr. Jackson. <laughs> almost. That form was improper. 
The information that was ultimately pulled off your phone was the information that you selected and you and Matt Kelch, Matt Kelch worked together to get off your phone, correct? Jackson. Is that correct? No, Your Honor, if I could explain. Sure. I, he, he walked me through on how I could pull the text string with John O'Keefe and the defendant. He walked me through the process, how to use the machine. Why didn't you, you just did turn that. your phone over? I did do that. That's and correct. That's what you turned over to the police. That's correct. And any other information would still be on your phone ending in 5421, correct? Well, that information stayed on my phone. I just took those strings off and provided them to the Mass State Police. Right. So where's your phone? I do not have that phone anymore. You've destroyed that phone, haven't you? No, I threw the phone away. That's the same That's thing. destroying the phone, isn't it? I had every right to do that. I didn't ask you about your rights. I asked you what you did. Objection. Sustained. You destroyed the phone by removing the SIM card. Half, correct? Objection. Sustained. Did you do that? Did you pull the SIM card out? Objection. Did you pull the SIM card out of your phone? Honor to the, uh, Your Honor, to the best of my recollection, if if I did take the SIM card out, I would have, if I was, when I threw it away, if I yeah, was going to take it out, I would break it or cut it, but I did not wipe the phone. I did not take anything else off it. But if I was going to throw the phone away, that's what I would have done. You did throw okay. the phone away. You know, as an ATF agent with electronic data experience, when you pull the SIM card out and break it, and then throw the, throw the phone away and the SIM card away, you don't need to wipe the phone. Objection. Sustained. Mr. Jackson, that's it. Are you serious? One more question. I can do this in 30 seconds, um, I think. You were aware that, the, that there was a court order that you not alter, delete, or destroy, or in any way manipulate your phone or the electronic data associated with it, correct? Objection. As to what date? As of September 23rd, I'm sorry, September 30th, 2022. Objection. I don't believe that's what the court order was. I think well, it's was. make a quick offer of proof. That's exactly what it was that he was doing. <laughs> it's like, you know what, Lolly? Were you aware of that? that? Was that your understanding? What's the question exactly, Your Honor? I'm sorry. That's the question. Again. Sure. Were you served with a, a copy of, of a notice on September 30th, 2022, that you not alter or destroy or manipulate anything on your phone on September 30th? I was served in order, yes, that's correct. And isn't it true, in another hearing, you explained that on September 29th, the day before you claim you got that notice, you changed phone carriers and changed phone numbers. And I maintained the phone. Until you didn't, when you destroyed it a month later by pulling the SIM card out and throwing it away, correct? Objection. Sustain. Did you do that in October? Did you destroy that phone? Objection. Sustained. Did you pull the SIM card out of your phone, Mr. Higgins? He's purposely not answering. I, it's possible that I did. I believe that's how I've testified. Yes. You, you testified. It's, that it's possible that if I if I if I took it out, that it was either cut or broken. It's not just possible. So that and that would have been after the date the order was already denied. Mr. Okay. Higgins, I have one question left. One question. Did you, Mr. Mr. Lally's already started. It again. I haven't even started. <laughs> Have a seat, Mr. Lally. Go ahead. Last question, Mr. Jackson. Quiet, please. Quiet. Mr. Higgins, very simply, and then we're done. Did you remove the SIM card for that phone, drive onto a military base, and be compound. the SIM card in one dumpster, it's gonna and object. phone in a different dumpster? That is not correct. Did you testify that- Was that your one question, Mr. Jackson? What? All right. Folks, that's it for today. So that's my problem with that judge, because Tommy, it, it, to cut him off like that, I mean, that to me screams, you should have let him finish. You should have let him finish. But what I find interesting is Brian Albert got rid of his phone and his SIM card and his carrier on the same day, September 29th, 2022, same as Brian Higgins. And yet they were ordered on the, on the 30th to turn everything over. So they knew it was coming. 
from a judge. They knew that the order was coming, but they're also experienced investigators. They've testified. They know about data extraction because Brian Albert actually used um, this kind of information to track uh, Victor Pena. And ATF agent Brian Higgins had also testified that he had experience and he's testified the same way. So for them to butt dial each other at the around the exact same time and then get rid of their phones and cha change carriers at the exact same time and they knew an order was coming down to turn over evidence. I mean, they knew better than to get rid of the phones, but they did it anyway. This screams cover up. And then once he I got close, what did the judge do? Shut it down. So clarification, they did not change phones at the exact same time, around the same time. I just want to clarify that. Oh, you mean like together. You backwards. Yeah, no. Yes. Yeah, they didn't weren't together. together. Mm -mm. One did it on the 29th, probably knew that the order was coming down. The next one did it on the 30th. Somehow, no, he did it on you the know, 29th. They both well, did it. The order came out the 30th. The they 30th. Both, that's what it was. Yeah. But and they both got rid of them on the 29th. Because they knew that shit was coming down. So no, that's like I said, I this yesterday was a, a a cluster of I wanted to bang my head, like, dude, that's what I said. Take a knee. Mm -hmm. I had smoke them, we've got them. But I'm and I'm wondering how, how Monday's gonna look. Like is he going to still be able to stand? There's only going to be one day of, of testimony and it's next week and it's Tuesday and it will be all day. But I mean, clearly if, you know, in the very beginning I was like, Oh, it could go both ways. I don't know. This is circumstantial. This seems sus. But after Higgins testimony, now I have to tell you that there is definitely reasonable doubt. Brian Higgins had motive. Chris Albert had motive because there's picture. Um, John O'Keefe was actually neighbors with Chris Albert, Brian Albert's brother. And uh, Chris Albert and his wife took pictures of them all over John O'Keefe's lawn, posing and stuff like that. And John O'Keefe hates people on his lawn because he takes really good care of his lawn. So, and they've had issues. They don't necessarily get along. So when you look at all of this stuff, how freaking Jen McCabe, her mysterious Google search three and a half hours before they discover the body, two butt dials three and a half hours before they discover the body, two people get rid of phones, two police officers who knew better. It's just too much. It's yeah, just too much. Just way too much. It's redonkulous. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree with you on that. So we'll see what happens next week. I'm sure Lolly and, and all of them, I'm sure the Alberts and McCabe's and Higgins and the former chief of police and the DA that was friends with them or whatever, you know, they're all probably like, we got to get our, our screws tight. We got to get this together. Things, things got to start adding up because Lolly, you got to get your shit together because you're proof for, as far as I'm concerned, you're putting in more reasonable doubt than anybody else. Karen Reed doesn't even have to testify at this point. I'm is agreeing with you. Is. Like, like so far you've not proven anything, but the, the holes in the stories that just keep stumbling or the non-answered questions, or you got a judge now intervening on objection. She's like, oh yeah, that wasn't objected. Go ahead and answer it. Like, yeah. I, I, or when she <laughs> says, or when she makes comments, like I'll give him that just say overruled or sustained, because if you're giving it something, you're kind of alluding to something. I don't, I don't like that, but I mean, I'm I not do agree with her sometimes about how he is articulating. Oh, the form of the sentences. question. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because there's a big difference between asking a question and trying to push the conversation. Yeah. Uh, leading. In a certain or... direct, leading. That's what it is. Uh -huh. Thank you. 
but and and so. you can't have compound questions. I mean, there's a lot of rules for lawyers. So I do agree with her on 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 many of those. But at the end, like the way she cuts off cross, I think is and this isn't the only day. It's just like, I don't know, because then they have time to get stories straight. So it's just coming across very suspicious. I'm not saying she's in on anything. I don't want to accuse a judge of something without any kind of proof. It's just coming across this way. Yeah. Again, no proof. It's mm -hmm. just how if I was on the jury. Different. Yeah. If I was it's on the jury, how order. I would feel. So. Um, well, and then, it, the, yeah, the last but not least, I mean, I would encourage people to go back and, and look at, you know, previous testimony and compare Brian Alberts with Brian Higgins and use common sense, an iPhone, a butt dial, you, you're having sex and you somehow butt dial somebody who somehow butt dials you back for 22 seconds come on and then it just times aren't adding up but we'll see how it goes we'll we'll uh keep following this and uh if you like the content or we definitely want to know what you think so please fill in with your comments some of your observations as well um like and subscribe and we will see you the next time Peace. later Oh my God. If I put my finger up, it looks like I'm flipping you guys off. And <laughs> you just flipped everybody off too. I'm not. I'm not. Peace. Yeah, bless it. Bye. <laughs>